All right, you creeps and freaks. You want to talk about multi-talented. You want to talk about wearing many hats, having your fingers proverbially in a lot of pies. We are talking about singer, artist, stand-up comedian, writer, and all-around DC badass, John Dimes, a.k.a. Dr. Sarcophagi. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. If you hadn't said my name at the end of it, I would have been like, wow, who is he talking about? <laughs> so where are you from, sir? Can we start with that? Yeah, I'm actually from uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, D.C., a Washingtonian, yeah. Uh, born here. Um, and it's funny, you know how it is when you, you think you're going to, like, move somewhere else once you have bo- you know, were born somewhere. I've never actually ever left the D.C. area. I mean, I lived in Charlottesville when I was a kid uh charlottesville virginia as a kid but then i all you know i came right back here to the dc area because you know it's so familiar and i and i actually really do love it a lot here my story is uh, uh features sort of like a uh, I, I i was trying to go for a uh, like a black mary poppins so what was it like for young john growing up in dc can you give us a bit of the flavor of what that was like um, I was. A, <laughs> I love that question because it made me think about how weird a kid I, I, I was. I was one of those kids that was uh, my suspension of disbelief and my naivete was definitely in play. <laughs> like for instance, I would turn my whole bedroom into McDonald Land. I bought like, <laughs> I bought like this McDonald Land poster, <laughs> and I made like little signs out of styrofoam cups a little signs out of paper, and I had this sign leading up to my poster, so I was going to McDonald Land, you know? Nice. <laughs> of course, I was just running into a wall, right? So I'm just skipping down this road into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a dumbass kid. Get yourself ready for a trip through McDonald Land. Let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else stupid that I was when I was a kid. When I wanted to run away from home, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to run away to run away to Sesame Street. <laughs> well, it's just a little mistake. And everybody makes mistakes. Yes. yes. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I have to ask, you mentioned McDonald Land back in that time, because I think we're probably around the same age. Did you yes. have the, the little plush hamburglar? Oh, I sure did. I had ham- I had two hamburgers. Matter of fact, I had one that was normal, and the other one I I cut it up and made it look like it was wearing an uh, uh, like kind of like this kind of uh, remember the hooded claw, Paul Lynn did it. So I made him look like this scary hooded claw thing. It looked really vaguely Klansman, but I didn't mean for it to look like it. <laughs> sure enough, the crafty old hamburger went for it. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I had all of it. I had the McDo- uh, Ronald McDonald. I had the, um, I definitely had Hamburglar. And the funny thing about, I don't know if you were the weird kid like me, but I think it smelled like food. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yes, yes, I did. <laughs> nice. So growing up, did you, were you aware of horror hosts? Did you know about them? Did you grow up seeing one? Um, My... First horror host as a child wasn't really a horror host. It was just um, the, it was Channel 7 in DC and they didn't have a host. What they had was, was spooky music, uh, wind and thunder and lightning playing and a rocking chair rocking by itself. And you hear, and there was an announcer going, and welcome to the blah, blah, blah. And it was just a chair rocking back and forth. Scary, scary and funny when I look back on it now. But uh, I didn't get my first horror host until uh, uh, 70. When, okay, when I first saw Count Gordoval back in 70, whatever it was. And uh, he is technically my second horror host after the rocking chair. We've seen a lot of changes because I remember growing up, we had three, like three normal channels and then two UHF. Yes. And that was it. I know what you're getting grumpy about. You want to like, why isn't local TV around anymore? Is that what you're going to ask me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I totally dig what you're saying about that. Man, it's like nothing feels like local anymore because everything has been absconded uh, with by either Fox or CBS or whatever, whatever, NBC. And nothing feels local like it used to anymore. Uh, that's why, you know, people like Count Gordonfall disappeared from uh, WDCA Channel 20 because Channel 20 has been taken over by Fox here in, in, in D.C. And but you, yes, yes, I miss that homespun local television where you get to see I Love Lucy and you get to see a horror host or you get to see uh, syndicated television that was old TV that I was raised by. I was raised by uh, Lucy. Uh, I love Lucy. I was raised by Ann Southern, the Ann Southern show. I was raised by, yeah, you get it. So I missed that because the TV doesn't feel that way anymore because um, it misses that local element uh, because everything is open up to everybody uh, uh, you know, coming in from New York and from San Francisco instead of just being local, local. Right. Because like it gave us, I think, uh, people of our age, a common language because like yeah. Monday, Monday morning at school, the first thing we were going to talk about is what was on Saturday Night Live and what was on Dr. Mad Blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, um, when I going back to when I lived in Charlottesville for a while, it was comical. Um, I had I forgot about that horror host down there. Uh, it was only I only had like basically one channel was WVIR channel twenty nine, and you can't get no more local than that. And it was Doctor Slime for uh, Slime Theater. It, it, and um, I remember walking by that TV station when I was a kid, little, little, little box of a place, you know, and his last episode, well, let me put it this way. I would watch him every Saturday with my little uh, personal pan pizza and watch him every Saturday afternoon. And my friends would be knocking at the door to like say, hey, John, come on out and play. I'm like, eh, I'm watching my horror films. And I remember feeling so sad the day that Dr. Slime uh, signed off for his final episode because what he did was he stood up in front of this wall and all these people with these fake machine guns started shooting him and he pretended he was dead and that was it. And I was like, wow, this is so sad. That was the last time I saw Dr. Slime. So the, the term monster kid, would you say you were a monster kid? Um, I can, I, yeah, yeah, I, I was just an all around weird kid. I, I, I couldn't just focus on just monster. You know what I mean? I was always weird. Um, like my taste in music, like, okay. So my, my black friends looked at me like, oh God, here comes John, you know? Because I loved weird music, I loved weird movies, still love comic books, all that kind of stuff. And they didn't. And I'm like, why are we friends, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, technically, I would qualify as a monster kid, even though I was just an all-round, un, unusual, weird, weird, weird little boy. My musical partner in crime, he always asks an awkward or silly question, and he's got one. Please, do it, his, do it, his, do it. His do name it. is uh, Sweet Yushi. They call him Sweet Yushi because he gets more ass in the toilet seat. Um, it's true, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's sure. <laughs> But he, I, I don't Always know if he to get a toilet seat. <laughs> That's how you, you, you're supposed to say it like that. That man get more ass than a toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> Why are most horror hosts old white guys? <laughs> <laughs> because of exactly what I just said about, about like five seconds ago. Because, okay, it. it <clears throat> There are certain things that a self, 
There are certain things. Who oh, get back from the floors? So I can see you. You stop disappearing. There are certain things that a self-respecting black person is not supposed to do. There have been so many times when I've said I'm going to get my black person card revoked for doing this, this, or this. For for example, one time I dressed up like I, I can't. I'm the only black person on the planet that can't stand Maya Angelou. So we did this skit making fun of Maya Angelou. And I knew for a fact I was going to get every black person on the planet pissed off of me if they saw it. But anyway, the point is, um, there's just certain things that black folks aren't, quote unquote, geared towards doing. And when I got into doing the horror host thing, you know, my friend Curtis, a white guy, said, hey, you're funny. You want you you know how to act. Want to do the horrors? And I'm like, and it didn't occur to me that I was black until uh, <laughs> until I had some of my black friends go, "You're a horror host." I'm like, yeah. And then you know we got into that. What you just said is like, why are you know you know you know black folks don't normally do that? And I'm like, well, why not? I mean, you know, I this is one of the things I tell most black folks. Black is a color, not a mode of behavior. <laughs> black, black has a history, but, you know, as a Black person, I could do whatever the I want in that history to do what I want. So when I tell people that, they go, well, yeah, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I, I, that's the only thing that I can say um, that is just that it ain't something that most Black folks tend to do. I'm like, when I noticed that Jordan Peele was doing what he was doing when I was watching Key and Peele and watching all of his movies, I was like, I was, I'm not, not to say that I'm bitter or anything, but yeah, I, I, I was doing that kind of stuff before he showed up. Um, and... I'm maybe a little envious, but not too yeah. much. You know what I mean? I'm just happy that he exists because now you you now when black people are in horror films, they have no other choice but to stick around because usually black folks are like, there's a monster, peace out. I'm not staying around. Yeah. Now, now they're in these situations where they, they, they uh, like I don't know if you ever watched the show um Lovecraft Country. Uh, no, I haven't. Yes, I didn't know about it either. But it's a, uh, um, it is a uh, of the African American genre horror horror uh, show. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Well written, well acted. Because I was afraid it was going to end up being like Death by Temptation. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. Uh, I was a bad audience for it, even when it first came out. But it, this. When you when when you finally get around to watching this show, it really takes that bad taste out of my mouth. When I when I think about when black folks sometimes when black folks do stuff, they don't always have the budget. The budget was here, and the story right. was here, and it wasn't just um, it wasn't pandering to my to to us. It was just a story. Right. And it was done really well. Because nothing I hate worse is, is like when I'm listening to a McDonald's commercial, you know when a McDonald's commercial is being done for black folks because it's more hip hoppy. <laughs> can we can we talk can we talk about Robert Klein and the two Budweiser commercials? This bud's for you, no. bang a bang, bang a bang. Uh, two, several kinds of bud commercials, evidently for white bud drinkers and black bud drinkers. If you're a white bud drinker, this bud for you, bang a bang, bang a bang, and everything you do a king of beer. And evidently, if you're black, you're supposed to. There's buds for you. <laughs> Lord, dang it. Yeah, I, lo I used to. Lo I used to love Robert Klein. He was awesome, awesome. Oh my god. But anyway, <laughs> you get my point. I I love when a show does. I love when things are done by black people, but it's not pandering to me. It's just I just wanted to just happen to be right. um, something that I could watch. Blah 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 blah. So where can all the creeps find Love Lovecraft Country? Uh, right now, they only did like the first season. I think it was on HBO. I, okay. I, I am a, a horrible pack rat in terms of my DVD collection. So it's to, it's available on DVD. I've got so many damn DVDs. It's horrible. I am so mad at myself for how many DVDs I have in my collection. It's nonsense down here.
Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love that. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> you probably even saw porn by accident. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no. No, that's in a special room. Um, but yeah, I have collected way too many damn things. Uh, comic books, books, those goddamn Funko Pop dolls. Yeah. They're all the same doll, but they're so distinctly different at the same time. Oh, Yes, and now oh. people are customizing them. Yeah, I was thinking about buying, uh, 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 commissioning them to get, you know, make one of Dr. Sarcophago. I was, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I'm hoping eventually just, you know, just to have it for myself. But I got way too many toys, way too many damn <laughs> toys. And I'm one of those accidental collectors that I've collected books and I will go to eBay and I'll go, oh, I can't read that anymore because that thing is like $300 now. Speaking of books, because you're quite the writer, and I'm very intrigued, and I'm going to buy uh, The White Corpse Hustle. That seems like it's going to be a awesome. lot of fun. Yeah. Can we talk about how you got into writing? And and I just have to say, all the creeps, check out on Amazon, John Dimes, The White Corpse Hustle. That looks like it's going to be so much fun, and I can't wait to get a copy. Um, I got into writing just because, um, you know... Uh, um, I, I it was sort of like an extension of when I was doing stand up comedy, I, and, and especially for that particular book. I just wanted to do something funny, something um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy like, you know, just a little spoof of, of vampires, things like that. I have an excuse to put illustrations in it, that sort of thing. Um, but getting into writing itself, it was at the time. Because I don't write that much now, because uh, it's it's such a solitary thing, and I'm not as solitary a being as I was when I was doing. Because uh, I did that book, I did um, uh, uh, the book that's out now. Uh, it's called Intrications. Uh, then I have another book, a fantasy novel called uh, The Rights of Pret Pretending Tribe, and a storybook that's in relation to that. And there was just this time when I was a very solitary being and I wanted to just churn stuff out. Um, and now um, my writing is more just me uh, doing whatever it is I do when if, I, if I'm happy to be doing another radio show at some point next month or devoting the writing to uh, being funny on my uh, shows or whatever. Um, but yeah, I started writing early when I was a kid. That's basically what I'm saying. I started writing when I was a kid. So someone that wanted to get into your writing, where would you point them to start? What's a good entry point for John Dimes? Uh, the good entry. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't have a fair question, a fair answer to that because I was trying to cover everything that I liked in several different things. You know, actually. It, uh, no, okay, the comic book stuff. You could start figuring out what goes on in my brain with the comic book stuff. So if you went to um, the free stuff, like if you go to um, uh, my uh, uh, www.johndimescomics.wibbly.com, too much to say, uh, <laughs> go to the comic stuff. And there's one uh, particular comic book that I did called uh, Gurleman's... Uh, Gurleman's, uh, uh, anyway, again, I can't, I, uh, anyway, it's a comic book about this character called Evelyn Gurleman, because I love, I love silent film stars, and what I wanted to do was, I wanted to do, what if you put a silent film star in a monstrous or horrific situation, and so that's what he is, Evelyn Gurleman, and I ended up animating him, um, which is on my YouTube page, uh, Antiperspirant Pictures. So I have a couple of cartoons with him uh, imperiled by monsters and uh, demonic babies and uh, all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to hopefully do a, a whole lot more uh, with him. Matter of fact, there's another book on that same page is called Enchanted Evening, where He's featured in something like an Edward Gorey type situation with these two women who hate each other's guts, but they're sisters and they have no other choice but to be there for each other. Because then you'll get an idea of how I am warped and I admit that I am warped person. <laughs> 
rundown where all the creeps can find you. So on Facebook, is it John Dimes? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, on Facebook, yeah, it is John Dimes. Yeah, you find me on Facebook at John Dimes. I have made it difficult for people to find me. It's true. But on Facebook, it's John Dimes. On Instagram, it's uh, Coincidissident, which is basically my first book that is so bad. I let that go out of circulation. It was a horrible book. Horrible. Horribly but, written, horribly edited. Oh, God. But for collectors oh. out there, you want to get a copy for collectors, for completists. <laughs> 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 and on YouTube, it's, oh, uh, YouTube, it's antiperspirant pictures. Yeah, antiperspirant pictures. Um, what will end up happening by accident is you'll find like you'll end up finding like aerosol cans by accident but if you keep looking you'll find me <laughs> or if you just say just look for dr sarcophagi and, and uh and in the youtube i have a lot of stuff that have animated under andy Perspirin pictures for dr sarcophagi so if you just type it in dr sarcophagi you'll find something you'll you'll find a lot of stuff awesome and Somebody mentioned Singer. Can we get into Singer? Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, again, in high school where I peaked. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did sing. Uh, sing uh, and then when I got out of high school and got out into the real world, I was in a... God, I can't believe I would tell you the name of this band. I was in a band called... <laughs> I was so embarrassed by the name of this band, but they were called Studs UK. Nice. Yeah. And, and nobody, nobody was from England. Nobody's from England. Uh, and then there was another band called Kilgore Trout. And I believe that's, I can't remember who it referenced that was too. But um, anyway, yeah, I sang. I'm still, I still sing from time to time. Uh, if you, if you, again, if you look up Dr. Sarkavaga, I got a song out there called Nosferatu that I did. Uh, that I wrote uh, uh, with a with a friend of mine, uh, and yeah, so I sing. That, but in that instance, I'm I'm purposely trying to sound like uh, Tom Waits, you know, yes, you know, nice. with, with the voice, you know. And uh, but yeah, I, I still and, and now I'm just reduced to doing karaoke, which is not a bad thing. It's just that you know, I don't I I just don't have uh, you know, I know I, I don't have the time to actually be in a band like I want to. Uh, I wouldn't mind being in a band, but if, nowadays, if I was going to be in a band, it would be probably like a a jazz kind of thing or or anything close to a a Tom Waits kind of situation where, you know, God, do you know this group called the Tiger Lilies? I have heard the name. I have heard the name. Dude, seek them out. Tiger Lilies. They call the Tiger Lilies Tom Waits on helium okay dude you're gonna you're gonna love them the the, the oh the title oh, they're amazing uh the guy's name is martin jocks he has the he he's a big guy but he's got this falsetto that is incredible and he nice. does all these things about horrors with scabs and and prostitutes and 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 oh dude look at look for them look for them they're, they're amazing i saw them in concert nine million years ago they were doing the um shock at peter man man you will never you, i hopefully you'll thank me for this why'd you do it jack Main man Halloween Jack, he said to ask you about uh, wearing Maya Angelou's dress. Because <laughs> I, I told you, I, made, I, I told you earlier, I did a whole bit about Maya Angelou. And it wasn't, and the funny thing about it was, it was my friend Curtis's ex fiance's dress. I couldn't put it on. So what I did was I just put it on the front and I just slipped my arms through the sleeves. <laughs> and, and instead of uh, having a wig, what I did was, I, <laughs> what I did was, I took a black t-shirt and turned it inside out and just made that my hair. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God! When I look back at how mean I was, that poor woman. <laughs> does that 
does that clip exist somewhere? Can the creep see that yeah, somewhere? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, to hawk more wares, Count Gordoval is putting out his DVD of Every Other Day is Halloween on Brinked Video, something like that, DVD. And, and uh, I am uh, supposed to have my documentary that my friend Curtis did, the producer, producer, director extraordinaire, C.W. Prather. It's called uh, Ball Headed Blues, a Dr. Minutary. And it should have a clip of me dressed like my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> with with that black t-shirt on my head as a wig. Oh, I'm ashamed. I love the relationship in there, and I just thought the you know, oh, yeah. Uh, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is the character? Um, Are you comfortable to talk about the stand-up comedy? Because I was intrigued to, that you were alongside, like, Patton Oswald and all these. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Um, It's funny. It's funny. Um... Because let me just, sorry, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you, Go but ahead. let me just say, this has been a blast just so far. And if you, <laughs> the creep, the creeps want to check out like all the pictures of you, there's like galleries and what comes through is just pure joy. I, I was smiling. I was smiling, looking at all these different pictures of you having a good time. And that's a yeah. rare thing. It's actually a rare thing to look at pictures of someone and you get joy from that. So all the yeah. creeps do do check out Dr. Sarcophagi, John Dimes, all these galleries because it's actually. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. There, there's, there's days when I'm, I get to be like Pegliacci, Pe 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 where I'm like, oh God, oh God, give me another bourbon. But I'm glad that um, the I'm glad that these the, the core essential. Who I actually am, because I don't know about you. I still have the brain of a thirteen-year-old, and I I get disappointed when I don't get to be that thirteen-year-old often. You know, uh, I'm glad I didn't say do that thirteen-year-old. That would have been really <laughs> sick sounding. <right? laughs> but um, the stand-up comedy. Um, that was just an because I, I, I didn't want to act at the time. I just wanted to be my own, quote unquote, my own guy. And unfortunately, I had this background of being uh, I have a, I had a very religious background. So I was so sheltered. So there was only so much that I could be funny about. And so when the horror host thing came along, you know, that was, you know, that was like perfect for me because um, I knew about monsters more than I knew about anything about real life. Uh, but the people I but but you you're curious about the people I actually uh, got to work with, um, Dave Chappelle. I knew Dave Chappelle at the very beginning, and let me tell you something. I can't stand a Dave Chappelle now. I love the other Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle now um, is what you become when you are in that environment of 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 Hollywood. Um, not to say that if somebody were to say, you know, hey, John, you know, in order for you to get this part to have to sleep with the producer, I will be butt naked before the sentence is finished. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> <laughs> who do I have to blow? What? Who? Wait, wait, let's go. Let's go. But, you know, <laughs> but but with Dave, it's like they, they say that once you get famous, it doesn't change you. It only enhances who you really are. And I don't want to think that he was always like that. Because when I first met Dave Chappelle, funny, funny. It, obviously, he's intelligent. He's never stopped being intelligent. It's just that I don't, I don't like this Dave Chappelle anymore. I like the other Dave Chappelle. Uh, Patton Oswalt is still this. He's still pretty much the same. I, I don't, I, I. But but the difference is he is now a he is at Oswald. So I, you know, and I'm, you know, just John Dimes. I'm not Pat Oswald. So I he he probably thinks I'm he, he he's complimentary of my work when when people have reached out to him to you know to but you know we're not like hey Pat, how you doing? Right. <laughs> Wanda Sykes, I knew back before. Uh, she became Wanda Sykes, and she's not. And she's the same. She's she's you know I've not seen her in nine million years, but she seems like she is still a down to earth, wonderful person. 
I just want to say it depends on where you're coming from because in my world, you're not John Dimes, you're John Dimes. <laughs> so I just want to clar clarify that for all the monster kids. To me, you're John Dimes. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And, you know, and, and, and I'm going to say this and it's going to sound like, you know, bullshit, but, you know, my ego thankfully does not require me to be John Dimes, you know? Uh, and so the fact that you told me that is just, that is just a, that's cool as shit. That's, that's cool. That is so cool. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. The easiest thing to say is the truth, you know? Oh, well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and can, can we get into the horror host underground? Because, uh, yeah. Now I was I my god hero is Dr. Madblood, but I thought mm. horror hosting was finished. And it was only after I moved to Australia and yeah. I wanted some memories and I was looking up some clips of Dr. Madblood and I stumbled upon Bobby Good Monster. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, there's somebody horror hosting on the internet. And I was happy. And I watched yeah. him, I watched him for about a year before I realized wait a minute, there's other people doing this too. And it's, uh, it, it was the same way that I felt when I first started, because uh, when I started back in 95, again, all we know is what, what, what is here. And all I knew was Count Gordoval and, and Bowman Body, people that were paid to be on television. Right. Uh, and then you got what I like to call the guerrilla network of horror hosts. And it's just as good. It's just that nobody knew each other existed. So they did this they thing back 90, whatever it was, where somebody said, hey, let's do it. Let's network. Let's all collaborate. Let's all show each other's shows on each other's shows. Let's, you know, and that's when that community really started, as uh, far as I'm concerned. And I got to see people that I, uh, and, and become friends with people I just did not know existed. I mean, A. Ghastly Ghoul, um, uh, Halloween Jack, of course. Uh, um, oh, damn. Uh, uh, I'm, he's going to kill me that I did not say his damn name. Because <laughs> uh, all I could do is I see his face and I, and because he's friends with, he's friends with all of us. <laughs> damn What's it. Look like? What's he look like? Oh, it's the, the, the fantastic top hat, mutton chops, glasses. The bone jangler. Yes, the bone, the bone <laughs> jangler. It's the bone, bone jangler. Because I just see his face. He's just a. He's just part of my psyche that I don't even, you know. And he's a, he's lovely. All of them are lovely, lovely. And I'm, I'm not even kidding you. When you get to Ohio to see all those people, you feel like you are in a community. And you don't feel weird and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Now, one thing that is also comes across with you, other than the joy, just talking to you this short time, is uh, the in intelligent conversation. So I, I'm going to ask you to speak on this. Okay. What, what is that thing that brings that community together? Because and I've said this a few times in a few interviews. I don't think it can just be nostalgia or how you felt when you were young watching a horror host, but what is it that, why are people still horror hosting? Why is it still going? What binds all these monster kids together that there's conventions and everybody gathers? What do you think it is? Cause I don't think nostalgia is enough to do that. Um, at this point, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, there must be some type of drive beneath all of the nostalgia, because otherwise, why uh, not get uh, some get paid, obviously. But then why for those who don't get paid? Um, uh, what is the drive to, to edit and be up all night trying to get the sound right, to get the all, uh, all the costumes, the the sets? What is it? Um, I think I'm. I, I think that again, there might be an underlying. I don't want to say that somebody felt again weird when they were a kid, uh, but whatever it is that made them feel a minority in everything else, this 
and finding out that there's a community out there of horror and horror host and being able to to have to capture the essence of that all the time is probably just a need to validate what they always have been, which is, you know, I love horror. Um, I love to entertain. Um, I might be like for myself, I'm, I'm an outgoing introvert. Unless, of course, I'm around somebody like yourself where I'm like, oh, you're actually listening. You're paying attention. But technically, I'm an outgoing introvert. And there are a lot of people who are introverts who are looking for a way to actually say, look, I, I, I here I am. Um, this is what I like to do. And thankfully, nobody's making fun of me. Uh, and so because it is, it is a pretty bizarre genre to want to want to be in full makeup and uh, possibly damaging your, your eye sockets with the fake eyes and, and teeth. Um, it is a way of actually, again, somebody wanted to be on television at one point in their life, and here's their way of doing it without having somebody controlling their content. Because um, you know what? You know, even though we all, we all do shows, but we have all more or less have shown the same movies uh, in certain respects because of public domain and thank God for it. And again, it's a way of taking control of, I'm going to tell you a weird story. I used to work at a, a an adult paraphernalia store. Okay. Okay. That's shot. Okay. So, <laughs> and this girl said, she, this girl said she liked to be choked. And I was like, what the hell? But I tried not to be judgmental. And I said, well, why? And I asked her in a way where not like, why, but why? And she says, because sometimes you want to control when somebody belittles you or maligns you or chokes you or whatever. That is your way of taking control by giving somebody you trust, be it an audience or other horrors, <laughs> a way of empowering yourself. And that's about as deep as I'm going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> so basically all horror hosts just want to, you know, just get, get choked out. There are, I guess there are a few and far between people who see it as a stepping stone, stone to possibly get famous, but I mean, the majority, 98% do not. So yes, it, it it's very, like people say, you're not going to make money. You're not going to really no. get famous. So, no. but it, I, I appreciate your explanation because that made a lot of sense. Yeah, because I, I, like I said, for me, it, like speaking for myself, it, it was a way of me going, wow, I love horror films. I like the idea of horror hosts. I get an excuse to be hammy and funny and and be in front of a camera for a few minutes. And then that 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 need has been sated. And then I go about my business, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that's probably what I said was about as close as you're going to get to probably an overall, you know, feel for what other horror hosts are going through when they want to you know, do this. Yes, sir. And Wikipedia says. You're the only African American horror host, but there actually is one other, Dario Evil. Yes, yes, and there was another one before that. Uh, oh, okay, um, I'm not. I wasn't aware. There was one before. It, te technically, I want to give them their props, but technically, he just was. He was doing like me, acting as a horror host. Uh, his name is Oldman. His name is uh, Todd. It was it Anthony Oldman, something like that. Nice fellow. I got to contact him when I've discovered he existed. There's another guy called Dr. Sick, who is an amazing musician. Oh. Amazing musician. World passes away. Together, we shall forge a new one. Uh, I unfortunately don't get to see his show as much as I would like, but look, look for him. Dr. Sick, and it's with um, D-O-K-T-O-R, Dr. Sick. Okay. Um, he wears this. He wears this sort of bionic mask. Lovely nice. fellow. Um, those are the only two I know about. But Dario, I'm proud of him. Proud, 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 proud of him. He's on fire. In in so before we <laughs> before we leave stand up, I have to ask this. 
Yeah. What is it like getting up in front of a potentially hostile audience? Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, I can't imagine armed only with your wit and a microphone. Like, do you, do you mind just speaking on what that, what's that like? What was the first time like and, and whatnot? Um, the first time, again, is the, when I did stand up, the first time I did it is when I realized, oh, my God, I'm actually an introvert person, an introverted person, because I had to have a chair. I had to sit down and I didn't look at anybody. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was a black Woody Allen. I'm not kidding. You. I was I was very neurotic. All I had to do was like, oh, oh God. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, I would never want to belong to any club that would have someone like me for a member. And uh, then finally, uh, <laughs> get up off the floor. Killing me. You're killing me. Tears. I really was. I really was. I was very nervous because I, I or maybe it wasn't so much that I was introverted. It's just I realized, oh, this is me, 100% me. This is not a script. This is me being me. And then finally, uh, finally, I got over myself and started realizing that um, it's sort of like when you it's sort of like when you go to your first strip club. It's like, why are you nervous about giving that girl a dollar? They're the ones naked. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. So the walk up there and give her the buck. And so um, and so once I started realizing that, you know, they're just people now. When they are a receptive audience, there's nothing like it in the world. And when you're using the same material and you feel like you, you've got the same energy that you had from the, the, the show before, uh, hey, uh, you, you have to, you, you can't be an angry person in that situation. You have to actually, be, you know what I mean? You, you, you have to go with it and you have to use it as part of your act. And and you and, and and try not to take it personal because yeah, people are gonna they, they're gonna heckle you, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it other than roll with it, go with it, and or or get, get down on this on this and sit next to them while they're talking at you. That, that that sort of thing you can. There's any number of things you can do to 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 you know get yourself out of that, but you know. Yeah, you just it just comes to the territory. You know, it's, flop sweat is going to happen. It's fascinating to me, and uh, I mean, good on you for doing. Are it you because, thinking about doing it? No, sir, not me. No, sir. <laughs> if if we get if we get to play live somewhere here, I'd be satisfied. That would be enough for me just to play. I got you. I got band. you. I got you. <laughs> no, not stand up for yeah, me. Yeah, it's uh. No, my, the highlight of my ex, of my existence, and because obviously I think you're old enough to know who this person is, I got to open for Willie Tyler and Lester. <laughs> fine, great, that's good. Yeah, how y'all doing? That's good. Yeah, fine, y'all. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I feel good too. Good. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yes, that man and his puppet, that little black puppet. That's right. Man, my head would have exploded if if I had had a chance, if I had stayed in it long enough to have, God, I would have loved, my favorite puppet on the planet was Madam. Uh, Nellie, Nellie Cake. Yes, Ella Zella. Ella, Ella Zella. She was an aerialist. Man, man, that was a funny, funny puppet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Willie Tyler and Lester, that was a highlight of my life. I was like, oh my God, I'm over the Man alive. <laughs> yeah, <Wow>. right? <laughs> Anybody else would be like, that's nice. So next. <laughs> yeah, no, they were that's legendary status, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's amazing to me too to do stand up in DC because in Norfolk it was like we, we call DC ill town. Ill like, town. Ill town. You didn't want to go to DC. Like <laughs> Dude, for me, uh, at the time, ha ha, at the time, okay, there was a comedy club uh, right off of Hooker and Vine, okay? Yeah, uh, it, it, and every night, it was Garvin's Comedy Club, and 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just basically proving your point. You're, you're not wrong because I would leave out of there and I would have to catch a cab to go home and all of those hookers, oh my God, one of my favorite hookers, <laughs> and I had, no, I didn't know. My favorite hooker was this woman. She was pregnant. <laughs> she, was a, she, <laughs> she was a pregnant hooker. And in my mind, I was like, I got to use this in my act because I'm quite sure that they're going to be like, oh, she's she's a sure she's pregnant. She's she's definitely not going to use a condom. So anyway, but yeah, yeah. Pregnant hooker that knew the cops by name. I felt like I was like on some cop show. It was hilarious after leaving the comedy club. Far out. But yeah. So DC, you're right. It At that time when I was doing it. Hmm. <laughs> So the hookers of D.C., it, the, for some reason, they were tired of the hookers that were in D.C. So they did this, we'll, we'll, I'll just call it the Million Hooker March, where they marched all of the hookers from D.C. into Virginia. I'm not lying. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> Look for it. It was like a 90 something. They marched those hookers from K Street all the way through Georgetown out uh, across the Key Bridge into Virginia. Yeah. That's my favorite memory of the hookers. Yes. <laughs> I don't see how they can do that anyway. How can they? Oh, those hookers know how to do all sorts of things in those high heels. Oh my God. Gosh. When I used to work, when I used to work at the adult paraphernalia store, so this hooker comes in, like I think it was three hookers came in with their with their their John. And they were trying on shoes. You know, the, the heels are like like nine foot tall. And so he tells the girl, okay, put the shoes on, girl. So she puts the shoes on. And then he says, No, no, run around. What? Run around. So she was so he said, yeah, run around like the cops are coming after you. And so, <laughs> so, so she's so she's running around in this store with a hooker heels, you know. It was great. And that hooker was and, and the John was scary. He was scary because one of the hookers came up to me. She says, How much does this cost? And I was like, Oh, well, baby, it's it's um, I think it's two hundred dollars. And she walks away, and then the John walks up to me and he says, so, man, how much are the shoes? And I politely said to him, um, I, I just told your uh, uh, associate <laughs> that, you know, the shoes were, you know, $200. Uh, I just told your associate how much they were. And he says, yeah, but I want you to tell me. I was like, uh, they're $200, sir. <laughs> I was not going to have Silky bitch slap me. In the middle of a sex shop. We can, if we can go on your journey of how you started horror hosting and what was your first show like? Uh, it's funny how I tell this story. The first show we did was back in back in 1995. Um, it was a show called um, Tales to Make You Say Goodness. And the way we pronounced it was tales to make it say goodness. And uh, we did it like that for, it was sort of like, you know, in search of that sort of thing in a, in a humorous vein. And then uh, C.W. Prather, look him up, uh, producer, director, uh, in charge of the spooky movie international film festival that he did for like 15 years. I don't mind plugging that for him. He hasn't, he's not, he's since disbanded it, but he might do it later. Anyway, he, uh, he, he said, hey, let's um, let's do a show like, you know, Count Gordeval. I was like, OK, OK, sure. Why not? Something to do. Um, and I was running around ideas about what I was going to call myself. And the first thing I wanted to do was, well, I was going to Dr. Sarkophaga. I was going to actually be uh, German. And so I was trying to make sure that I could do a German accent without having to practice too much. Nice. And then finally, I just decided to just settle on my own uh, family background of Southerners. So I just decided I was going to make it like Foghorn Leghorn because he's a smart ass. And, you know, so that you can emphasize a certain thing, you know, that sort of thing. And um, and that's what we did. And and I had to come up with a name and I'm going to 
coming up with names. So I said, well, Dr. Sarkava guy, or I was going to call myself Kareem Ortorium. And, you know, but that would maybe have to be a little more aggressive than I wanted to be like Kareem, you know, like, like I was part of Malcolm <laughs> X's crew or something. So, so Dr. Sarkava, <laughs> so, <laughs> have to wear a little bow tie and sell bean pies the whole time. And so, <laughs> dude, I remember in Norfolk, they, they were selling the newspapers, dude. These all the time. I remember yes. that. And the stop bean pies, bean pies and tube socks. Yes. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> what a dichotomy. So, um, and the first episode was just me wearing a a, a straw hat and an, and an old London fog uh, uh, coat and sunglasses. And the rest was that. And he would film me whenever he got a chance to film me. We would do a whole lots of things, you know, a whole lot of them. Uh, it was basically guerrilla filmmaking at its best or worst, whatever to say. And then um, at some point, uh, you know, you kind of feel like nobody cares, nobody's watching, nobody's paying attention. So, you know, ultimately I just said, well, let me stop this for a while because I, my expectations are having an impact on having a good time, you know? And so I just focused on the writing, focused on everything else, because I, I, I feel that, you know, there are times when Dr. Sarkovica is an actual person and I'm competing with him. And then sometimes he's just sort of like, like how you pick up a guitar and you play a guitar or you make a song. It's just like he's an aspect of your creative process you know what i mean i'm dr sarkoff guy here in downtown silver spring over the course of time of doing it what has been your most cherished memory would you say of doing oh god my cherished memory of the show has always been working with uh leanna chamish i was so glad you asked me that question because that's oh, i'm glad you asked that question glad, 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 glad. because uh one leanna chamish Working with her when I finally got when we got to the next seasons of, of Dr. Sarkov Guy or, or or spooky movie television and meeting Count Gordoboff for the first time. Um, oh my god, he was reviving his show for 1999 into 2000, uh, yeah, uh, for a special show at WDCA in DC and. Curtis contacted him and said, hey, um, there's this friend of mine, he does a show and he wants to, you know, and and so Count Gordoval contact, contacted us and said, hey, would you like to have a, be a part of our New Year's thing? And I remember my heart just racing, you know? I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be doing something for my hero. Uh, flash forward to years later when I finally, when, when, when Count Gordoval and I went on a road trip I had to put myself into this fugue state so that I would not, you know what I mean? Because when you are sitting in a car for hours with somebody, like, bookmark that. When I met Patrick Stewart, and I was just walking home one day and I met Patrick Stewart, and I'm like, hey, you're, you're, you're Patrick Stewart. He's like, yes, I, yes, I'm Patrick Stewart, yes. And it's like, oh my God, um, what are you doing here? Well, I'm doing a production of Othello. Oh yeah, you're doing a thing. And, and then finally, it occurred to me, I'm fucking talking to Patrick Stewart. So I'm like, listen, um, uh, I'm, I'm not stalking you in anything. I'm just on my way home. Yes, I'm aware of that. Yes, I'm aware of that. But um, I, I got to duck into this uh, store. Make it so. And Patrick went his way. And then I leaned and went into the store and I was like, oh, I just met Patrick Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Gordoval on the road with Carol Gordoval. Huge state. Because I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the car with Count Gordoval. And he's just a lovely person, sweet guy, normal person. Like, but it doesn't matter. He's exactly. Count Gordoval. And now when I see him, you know, I still, you know, go, but I'm, 
but I still, you know, he's still, he's still, he's still my vampire. He's still my horror host. Uh, and going back to my other chairs, maybe Leanna, a uh, Leanna Chamish, working with her, man, because I, I need somebody to bounce off of when I'm being silly. And she roasted a challenge like nobody's business. <laughs> and it got to the point when I was watching the show with her, I was like, her to just do this show i don't even want to be here she's too good she's better than me <laughs> if you if, if, when you get a chance to uh find those episodes just just marvel at how cool she is she is so so damn funny yeah so those are my two cherished memories um there might be more but those are the two that stand out because of, of working with those two people um also i guess uh, obviously, when I got um, uh, what is it? When I got inducted to the Horror Host Hall of Fame, that was that. It, it, that's not bragging when I say that was just what this is cool. You know, this is really cool. Um, because you know. It, it, those guys have been doing it forever and I didn't feel like I was doing it long enough, you know? So all I know is they ain't going to take my damn plaque from me. No. Ah. If they do, if they, if they, if they, they're not taking that damn thing from me, I, I will bite every last one of them. <laughs> yes. I will give them rabies. I promise you. If I take a bite of them, that day I'll go. My personality is hinged on George Clinton. Yes, sir. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't for Parliament Funkadelic and Dr. Funkenstein and, Bo and Boots of College, baby, I would not be, you know, I would not be the person I am. <laughs> you like that? Boots of my head, baby. <laughs> I do. I do. Bootsy, I'm a, I'm a bass yeah. player, so Bootsy is my guy. Like, oh, baby. Yes, sir. His bass plan is amazing. His, let me tell you, the I got to see him with the band Delight years ago, years ago. He came out there and ladies and gentlemen, Bootsy Collins, bring, 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 bring. Yeah, baby. He had the star glasses, teeth this big. Man, there's nobody like Bootsy Collins. Nobody like Bootsy Collins. I'm trying to think of my other favorite bass player right now. There was that guy that played for uh well, oh what was his name? Getty Lee. He was a good bass player for oh, yeah, Rush. hell yeah. And I liked uh I love the Isley liked, brothers. Oh, dude, let me tell you about the Isley brothers. They were some boring somebody's in show. I remember <laughs> watching some video of the Isley brothers. Man, all that Rudolph would sit there with that damn cane and just wave it across the audience like he was doing something. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you casting a spell? Get your ass <laughs> on the stage and sing. Good Lord. <laughs> Ohio, Ohio players. Ohio players are cool. I love Ohio players. They the, see the funny thing about Ohio players, I never those damn album covers. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> The album covers. It was like because the music was fantastic, you know. But Lord, them album covers. Y'all some nasty somebody's. Do. And you know my favorite album cover ever, Millie Jackson. What? Oh, okay, Millie Jackson was she sitting on a toilet? <laughs> Panties around, dude. I don't know if you're able to look online right this minute, but look, look for Millie Jackson. And just say Millie Jackson uh, on a toilet. I don't know if you're able to look online right this minute, but look, look for Millie Jackson and just say Millie Jackson uh, on a toilet. And I hope to God that you're going to laugh for 10 to 15 minutes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> are you kidding me? What that the hell? Woman, right? That woman could sing. Her ass off. Her, she was one of those people, she would speak 
sing, but when she sang, it was incredible. She was like Pearl Bailey. I was always pissed off at Pearl Bailey because I'm like, Pearl, you can sing. You don't need to chat. You know, I can understand like Madonna speaking through a song, you know, because she's not a singer. Yes. Madonna, go ahead and speak. But yeah, so yeah. Um, but well, why, did, why did I get all high? Play? Oh, bass player. Uh, there was a guy f- that worked with Prince, Levi Caesar. Okay. Levi Caesar Jr., great bass player. I love it. Because the reason why I like bass players because I am a tenor bass when I sing. So whenever I can't sing a song, I'm usually humming along with the bass line. Right. Like, uh, like this is not me showing up. This is just me. When I hear the song, Do I Do with Stevie Wonder, I can't hit those notes. So I'm in the I'm sitting there going do 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 so that's what I do when I can't sing a song. I do the bass line. And how are we talking about bass players without talking about the mighty Rick James? See, Rick James was just cool. I it broke my heart that that Purple Rain, when Purple Rain came out. And Gina Marie's a good bass player, too, if I recall correctly. But Rick James, it broke my heart when Purple Rain came out because Rick James was at his lowest ebb when he did this album called Glow because he, you could tell he was trying to be Prince. Never mind who you thought I was. I'm Rick James, bitch. And I'm like, Rick, no, you yeah. are Rick James, you made Eddie Murphy sound like he could sing. <laughs> you know, you're Rick James. Um, when when Dave Chappelle, that's the one thing Dave Chappelle did that made me happy. When he had Rick, when he did, I'm Rick James. God damn it! <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you and I are is still one of my favorite songs ever. By Rick yes. James, you and I is an amazing. You and song. I fit together like three, what was it like? We we get together like three part harmony. Don't you agree? Yeah. yeah, man. Let me tell you, when that song came out when I was a kid, oh my God, Mary Jane. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I was in a uh, sex ed class in eighth grade, sixth or seventh grade, something like that, we were talking about marijuana. And they said, oh, and of course, marijuana is also called Mary Jane. And I started singing Mary Jane in the middle of class. They were like, you're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> On the horror host, what was the moment when you were thinking, why am I doing this? Your least favorite moment. My my least favorite moment. That's every time there is like a break between doing the show because, um, like I said, but like for instance, um, a big for instance, uh, a year or so ago, um, I uh, when you went online, probably you saw all the pictures of when I did the live shows, uh, and at the AFI. And Count Gordival was doing live shows at AFI. And I was feeling like, well, what is the point of me when people are actually coming to see him along with the movie when I felt like people didn't know, really know who I was? So I felt like what I felt like when I was doing the show sometimes where I was like, well, um, I don't want to wear out my welcome and I don't want to and if I'm wearing out my welcome I don't want to keep doing this to I, I don't want this to look like I'm just placating my ego if I'm con- going to continue to do this so I would discreetly disappear uh, and there was like a couple of years where I just basically uh, just sat back and told people, you know, you don't have to call me sarcophagus, just say John, blah, 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 whatever. As though it meant something. It's sort of like, when you know, you know what I mean? It's sort of like when you're on Facebook and, and you tell people on Facebook, I'm, I'm going to not do Facebook anymore. It's like, scares a damn. Who cares? Just don't show up. We're not going to care. And so I changed my expectations of what 
this thing is, whatever this is, this horror hosting thing is, I put it into a proper perspective and I didn't feel like I needed to, I mean, when I got to that point where I was like, eh, let me just disappear for a while, I didn't feel a drive or a fear that I was going to lose audience or lose something. You just, you just do it when you feel like you're going to put your best foot forward whenever you feel like doing it. Does that make any sense what I just said? It does. I can, I can uh, totally uh, empathize with that. I've, <clears throat> The number of times I said, oh, I'm going to delete the channel. I'm going to quit the band. Yeah. I, I can't tell you the number of times. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it breaks and you break your own heart because you go, oh, my God, I'm, I, I love this so much. And then you and then you and then you finally hit on it. I love this so much. I actually enjoy it. And so because I've I've taken down stuff. And then I'm like, what did I do that for? What did I do that for? Because that was a couple of times I wanted to take down the, the sarcophagi page. And Curtis, my friend Curtis, he says, hey, don't do that. Give us some time. Um, but yeah, you do kind of disappoint yourself and you break your own heart. And then you find and say, wait a minute, I actually like doing this. So as long as I'm having a good time doing it, because you, if you play to yourself, I play when I, whenever I'm doing anything of this, I kind of just say, well, I'm going to have to cuss now. I was like, fuck the audience. I just want to tell a joke right now. I am in the mood to tell some kind of joke. I'm in the mood to animate something. I'm in the mood to be Dr. Sarkovica. I want, like when the radio show thing happened, I was like, well, I guess somebody gives a damn. And I don't know how many people were listening to the show, but you know what? I had so much fun doing it. There you go. Um, I couldn't do it as much as I want to do it simply because dumbass me when I was doing a radio show, I'm like, I got to have, I want to be different from all the other DJs somehow. And I was like, well, I got to do skits. And it takes, and I ain't complaining when I say this, but it takes forever to do a good skit. And, you know, so I was like, look, and I saw, so I told the radio, the radio folks, I'm like, listen, I, I, I got to, you know, can't do too much more to radio. Um, let me just do it every once in a while. And then there you go. Um, but yeah, there are times when you, 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 you do get disappointed with why am I not reaching enough people? Uh, um, why is the, uh, 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 did, am I, why am I not getting any feedback, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, you know, somebody like you comes along and says, Hey, I really like your stuff. And I'm like, well, I didn't know you existed, and I appreciate that. Thank you for <laughs> it. You know, and it's not, and, and it's like I, I and, and I mean that in, me, in meaning that I didn't know that you, as an audience member, actually saw what I saw, or saw what I was doing, and I'm like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, um, I think so many so you, horror, horror hosts have that. Like, I'm a huge Danvers fan. And Danvers is a lovely for oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Danvers is so much. <laughs> yeah, he's he's another person that's been really supportive. Uh, his friend, um, uh, uh, Dr. Professor Griffin. Yes, sir. Lovely person. Lovely person. Uh, Joseph Faustina. Uh, I, I, I'm never saying his last name right. My other favorite horror host on a planet other than Count Gordeval, Henny Dreadful. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henny Dreadful. Love, love, love. It's a wealth of so much cool. Oh, my gosh. She, whenever I'm doing something animated and I need somebody to sound like Fran Drescher or some crazy lady <laughs> or... Or just somebody just wonderful. I had her a uh, voice a uh, uh, a video I did of Wonder Woman running for president. She's <laughs> such a great actress. All right, final thoughts from Doctor yes. Sarcophagi to all of his fans. Oh, final thought. Oh, uh, look. Oh, uh, oh, oh, this is where this is where Curtis would tell me I'm supposed to plug stuff. Uh, 
Monster Channel is showing two new things. My uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sarkovica presents uh, a tunnel vision. That's T-O-O-N-A-L vision. You get it. Um, and my finally my debut episode, my, my my other 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 debut show. Um, I'm debuting my new uh, Dr. Sarkova guys Fright Gallery, which is going to be on the Monster Channel. And I'm also uh, hopefully showing Tunnel Vision on um, OSI 74 on uh, Mr. Lobo's channel. Yes, sir. So and oh, oh, I love Lobo and I love his wife Dixie. See, so there you go. Um, so yeah, and and please uh, find my books, except for uh, Coincidence, because that book is horrible. It's horrible. I challenge, it's, challenge to all the does. monster kids. Buy that and collect it. And I don't think it's as bad as uh, as Mr. Dimes thinks. Oh, it's 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 bad as that. Oh, oh, and if and since we were talking about movies, I got a book called "There Are No Bad Movies, Only Bad Audiences." Yes. It's nice. about cinematic and literary and personal criticism. Yes, yes. Look for that book. It's written by Dr. Sarkovica. It's like a, a Valerie Solanus rant. Nice. I, I, I wish I could have cut and pasted it like it was a ransom note. That's how crazy the book <laughs> was. <laughs> but anyway, my, my closing thought is thanks so much for like having me on the show. And uh, happy Halloween.